It's been well over a year since I did my video on the top 5 best units in Fall of the Samurai. I suppose it's about time to tell you my top 5 worst. Before we get started with the list, I want to regurgitate my disclaimer. This list is based solely on my experience on legendary difficulty single player campaigns, and thus I do not recommend using this list as a guideline for multiplayer. Also I'm judging units based not only on their performance, but also taking things into consideration such as recruitment requirements and campaign limitations. With that out of the way, let's get to the list. Starting us off at number 5 are Boki. The problem with Boki is that they are straight up outclassed by other units. They're not inherently bad in and of themselves, and can actually be quite useful in a handful of situations, but overall they're just not up to the standards of other similar units. They have one statistic that stops them from being complete lemons, and that is their range. They're one of the few units with 150 range, and while high range is useful in cavalry who can stay out of range of most infantry, having to micro them throughout a battle while they get maybe half a dozen kills with each volley just isn't worth it. And that's where their main problem lies. It just takes too long to get value out of them, and if you don't pay attention for a few seconds and they're left in range of any kind of gun units, they'll lose half their men in a single volley. Besides their range, they just don't have a whole lot going for them. Their reload rate is mostly determined by how fast you skirmish with them, and they can only fire in front of them, so you have to keep lining them up before they can even actually fire a volley. If for some reason you're forced to use them in melee, you'll find that they're not particularly great at that either. Not that you would expect the Boki to be any good in melee, but they're really quite poor. Even Bo Cavalry from Vanilla Shogun 2 have better melee stats. Moving on to number 4, where I have placed Levy Infantry. I've always found Levy Infantry to be such a useless unit. When you've got the choice between Levy Infantry and Spear Levy, I just don't see a good reason to take Levy Infantry. Because of the Levy Infantry's horrendous stats, they'll only be able to fire one or two volleys before a Spear Levy will be in their face, at which point it's bye bye Levy Infantry. If you want to use a gun unit early on, just build a cadet school and get yourself some line infantry. They're only slightly more expensive, but they're infinitely better. There's just not many redeeming factors about Levy Infantry. They don't have access to new fire, although if you're still using Levy Infantry in the late game you're probably doing something wrong anyway. They don't get suppression fire either, but again the same point applies. I honestly can't find any more words to describe why this unit is bad. They just are. We find a similar unit occupying the number 3 spot, Matchlock Kachi. This unit is bad for mostly the same reasons as the Levy Infantry, but somehow this unit is worse. If you have a quick glance at their stats, you might think that I've lost my mind. But I can't lose something I never had. Oh, Silver. Anyway, it's true. Most of the Matchlock Kachi stats are higher, save for two of the most important ones, range and unit size. Matchlock Kachi have the lowest range of all ranged infantry in the game, not counting ninjas, which means that in a line battle, you will never get off the first volley. Combine that with the smaller unit size of 120, as opposed to 200 of most other infantry units, and you understand that Master Kachi will be dead before they get to do any significant damage to anyone. Even if they're up against melee units, they won't be able to do much because of their low range, as by the time they've managed to fire off a volley, the enemy will be in their face. All the other reasons why levy infantry are bad also apply here. No needle fire, no suppression fire, just get line infantry instead. Coming in at number 2 is a unit I don't think many people expected to see, the Samurai Hero. I personally hadn't even really considered putting this on the list until I started making it, mostly because I had completely forgotten this unit even exists. Where do I even start? First of all, before you can recruit the Samurai Hero, you need a legendary dojo, the highest tier traditional dojo in the game. If a unit takes that much to acquire, it had better be pretty freaking amazing, which the Samurai Hero certainly isn't. Second, when you do finally manage to build yourself a legendary dojo, you'll have to comply with a single unit, as because it is a hero unit, you won't be able to own more than one at a time. Third, because it is a hero unit, the samurai hero consists of a whopping 40 men, and because of the way gun units work in Shogun 2, 40 men means about 40 hits for it to die. Hero units withstand more damage when fighting against melee weapons or when tanking arrows, but a gun will bring one of these down in one or two shots. All this without even touching on the stats of the Samurai Hero, which aren't anything special either. The Samurai Hero is a ranged cavalry focused unit. Its melee stats are poor to say the least, and its range stats aren't actually that much better. It doesn't have any special range, sitting at a measly 150. It has high accuracy and reload skill, but only 25 arrows and similar to the Boki they can't fire behind them, so they have to line up before firing a volley. And as I mentioned before, if you leave them unattended for a few seconds and then take a volley from a gun unit, it's bye bye Samurai Hero. I think it's time for this unit to go back to the Sengoku Jidai. Finishing off the list at number 1 is a unit I think most of you will have expected, Wooden Cannons. Before I smash this unit into the ground, let me start off with their strength. 
notice the singular form of that word. Because it is an artillery unit, has a whopping 500 range, if the enemy doesn't have any artillery, this unit can make the enemy attack you even when you're supposed to be the attacker. Now that that's out of the way, let's smash! If the trick I just explained doesn't work, you just lost one of your units because wooden cannons can't move after having been deployed. And thus, even if it does work and you're defending, you have to place your army around them or risk losing them. The cannonballs it uses don't explode on impact like later artillery, meaning that even if they hit a unit, it doesn't even guarantee a kill. And that's assuming they can even hit a target, which due to their horrible accuracy, they don't do very often. Their reload rate is laughable, their ammunition is laughable, all their other stats are laughable. They slow down your army on the campaign map, as do other artillery pieces, but other artillery pieces will kill hundreds of men. Wooden cannons will be lucky to kill a dozen. I can keep going, but I think you get the gist. Wooden cannons are basically never worth bringing, because it would only take a few more turns to bring the far superior parrot guns instead, as they don't require any technology to be unlocked. That's gonna do it for my top 5 worst units in Fall of the Samurai. Do you agree with my list or does yours look different? Let me know in the comments. In case you missed it, I now have an official merchandise store. Check the links at the top of the description. Finally, if you'd like me to make more of these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching, have a good day, and goodbye!